Erica, when you look at the success of this, the bidding war for the movie rights, just the numbers, I mean, can you remember a time when you were concerned about how this would be received, how people would react to what you were writing? I think you're always concerned about how you'll be received and how people will react to your writing. That's part, that's part and parcel of being a, being a writer, being an author. And I think one of the things for me is all you want to do is be read. Mm. And... Um, I think in terms of that, I think it's been incredibly successful. So, uh, yeah, and I did not expect that at all. How did you find it letting go of, you know, or get passing your vision on to, to somebody else and to a whole entire movie Awful. team? Yeah. Awful. <laughs> <laughs> the character's been with you for so long. Um, and then surrendering it to somebody else. It was a very challenging time. But I, I, I managed to insert myself as a producer on the films as, because, I, as you know, I have a passionate fandom and I wanted to make sure that the fans were going to be pleased with the end result. And I think um, for all of the creative conflicts we had, which were inevitable in a you know, a collaborative creative medium, that's going to happen whatever you're doing. I mean, there are going to be inevitable conflicts. But, yeah, I think that we resolved them and the result was, is... is I think the fans will be pleased. Sam, you've dealt with passionate fans before, I mean, uh, to a smaller degree, obviously, with your previous film, mm -hmm. No Way Boy. And how did your experiences differ? When I first came in for the uh, meeting, the interview, if you like, for, for the job of Fifty Shades, they said, are you, you know, you're not used to dealing with a, a big fan base. And I said, well, No Way Boy was a movie about John Lennon and he was one of the Beatles. I am a little bit used to it. And how you deal with it is to listen and be respectful to everyone's opinions, but then you have to stay Stay true to to the vision that you have at the same time. Jamie, when did you realize when you got on board this project just how passionate the fans were? Even before I'd read the books or I had any involvement with the, the this project, I was aware that you know probably around that time that, that it was nearly 100 million people had read the book, and now it is over that. Um, so I was aware that you know a lot of people cared about this and a lot of people cared about the characters. Yeah. Did you feel that pressure? I tried to block all of that out, you know, because. I don't think it's healthy to carry that into a workplace, you know, and it's no different a film set, it's no different to any other workplace. No, I think it's an incredible love story, you know. I think that's why it's been so popular is because people are, you know, sort of enchanted by it. What do you think it is about Anastasia, though, that's made her so popular? I think it's the fact that she's, you know, a quiet and private person but with this incredible strength to her. Anastasia had a, a laptop given to her to do her research. You yes. had two children. How did you do your research? I did my research over over several years. Um, uh, I remembered fairly recently that I'd, back in the day, I'd picked up a book called Macho Sluts by Pat, by Pat Khalifa, which is all about lesbian BDSM. Um, and I... <laughs> <laughs> ended up reading that and thinking, wow. Uh, read some books and got into some forums and, and just talked to people. And yeah, I'd, uh, I was, yeah, it was an interesting time. Much was made about, the headlines were all about the sex and the, in the book and yeah. all that. Oh. But at the heart of it, it's a love story that I think... Thank you. <laughs> ...that I think that the fans have been responding absolutely. to. Absolutely, absolutely. Which love story got you? Was, was, was it Twilight that got it was you? It was Twilight, but it's always, I've always been... A romance reader, uh, and yeah, Twilight particularly, I thought was 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 just a fabulous love story. Um, I think Stephanie Meyer knocked it out of the park, and she inspired me and so many other women to write. Um, and I'll be forever grateful to her. Any scenes that were left out that you weren't able to include that you were disappointed weren't Not at all. Any? You have to almost, you can't be attached to things when you're editing because if you're attached to them and they don't work in the movie and you put them in, then the movie can fail on that. You have to constantly propel the story and you have to be, you know, almost cold hearted about things that you have to leave behind and just say, it's not working. Mm. Um, and, and you get to a point where you can't even remember what they are because everything else is working so well. There's three quite long books, right? A trilogy of books that have sold hundreds of millions and you can't, they wouldn't, if they were based purely on s and they wouldn't be a success. There has to be something that you can Pick your hat on that 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 you can grab out of it, other than just the sex, and that is this love story that and these two characters, you know, at the centre of it all. And I think that is what that's what's really sort of binded people. Thank you so, so much. Thank you very binded. much. Binded, but I'm bumped. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs>